Kevin, I'm going to help you build a 100-unit portfolio. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. I'm James Wise. I'm your host. And this show, this is where I work with you one-on-one. -on -one. We try to build real estate portfolios, help you guys grow your net worth through real estate investing. And uh, I'm working with a new client, right? It's my dude, Kevin. Kevin from California. You are... Uh, I'm assuming, based upon your picture, you're a young blood man, young cat. I like that. I got started when I was really young, too. Uh, I bought my first property at 21. You want to build a 100-unit portfolio. I don't remember how old I was when I crossed the 100-unit uh, mark. I was somewhere in my 20s. Um, so it's very doable. It's very possible. And I'm going to help you do that, bro. Uh, where you're starting right now, you got 60K in cash. And let me tell you, bro, it's a lot more fucking money than I had when I got started, when I first bought it. So you could definitely do this. Your goal is to get 100 units in 10 years. So we could definitely accomplish this goal together for you, man. Uh, we could do it. We could do that uh, goal together for you, man. <clears throat> Lost my voice there for a second. All right. So the, the, the first property, though, I want to go over, okay? This is uh, 1825 Lakeview, and this is one you sent me, and I think this is super important. We're going to go over this one first because this is incredibly important because you did kind of an analysis. This is not the first client of mine that's been interested in this property. Uh, a while back, right, uh, it was episode like 101, 102, 103, something like that. I was working with this dude named Angus, foreign national. The guy's got fuck ton of money right couple million dollars and just buying fucking properties like crazy and he sent me this one he was interested in it at that time it was actually under contract normally i wouldn't analyze it if it's under contract but uh it's so important the information i was about to give him on that property was so important i wanted to analyze it anyway uh so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to give you that footage because what you're going to see in this particular uh, analysis of this property is just so very, very important. Like, because you're looking at the, uh, the Cleveland market with your out-of-state eyes, dude. You're looking at it with California eyes. Um, and I know everything in Cleveland just seems cheap as shit compared to what you're used to. But take a look at this footage now. 1825 Lakeview Road, East Cleveland, 44102. Now, this one is actually also currently under contract. And normally... I wouldn't want to spend any time uh, going over this property with you because at the very moment, you can't bid on it. Now, a lot of these deals, I mean, it's very common for rental properties to fall out of contract, just so you guys know. So, like, if we analyze a property for you and then you put in your bid and you get outbid by another investor, don't think that that's necessarily all she wrote. A lot of these deals come back on the market, guys. Investors around the world are, you know, some of them are flaky. I'll be honest with you. I mean, we get we get folks to flake. If you if you're a big time viewer of the investment properties for sale show, where that's the properties we're selling, that we email to you guys at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every day. If you haven't been watching that show, you friggin' should. So make sure you smash that subscribe button so we can send that to you every day. Those shows come with video tours. But uh, you'll see some of the properties come back on the market because, you know, folks flake or they get their inspection and they realize, oh, this is more work than uh, I was thinking. You know, when I explain these properties to people, I try to give the most transparent look possible. But I want everyone to do their due diligence and get the inspectors in there so they can really go through these properties on a fine tooth comb. Because I, I, I notice a lot of viewers, sometimes you guys try to think best case scenario in your head, even if that's not what I'm saying. So that's why, you know, we push so heavily on making you guys get those inspection reports because dude, even if the property is a brand new, beautiful million dollar house that was just built yesterday, inspectors uh, reports have a way of making that look like a, a rough property, which is good. That's, that's what you want. You want the most critical, you want to look at a property through the most critical lens possible. So like with all that said, right, this particular property, 1825 Lakeview Road. Under contract, it could 
you know, fall out of contract, it could be available. But at the moment, it's not necessarily available. But the biggest reason I wanted to talk to you about this property is really to just set proper expectations and get things going. Because you uh, seem uh, to be very interested in this property. And from the looks of things, I understand why, okay? It's listed by Keller Williams. They've listed at 149900 It is a big old quad. Quads are my favorite properties kind of like this color too not that that actually matters but i do like the dark uh bluish gray color i think that looks pretty cool uh it doesn't look great on the sides when it's like not matched with the rest of the red brick but i do think it looks cool but that's just uh completely irrelevant um don't think that uh, that adds value it doesn't uh cruising through the photos right we got big old units here you know, you got the hardwoods. They got the little cheapy. Uh, what they did is you see this in low income rentals quite a bit. Instead of actually um, staining the hardwoods, you just take like uh, dark brown deck paint. Uh, that's how you could tell that the landlord has either got something seriously low income on his hands or he's just a uh, total slumlord. Uh, but, you know, the units, they're big, they're spacious. Uh, they look pretty okay. The kitchens, they got some like vinyl wood flooring in there. Fixtures, uh, they're decent. Uh, I mean, it's like not the greatest thing in the world, but it's not the worst thing in the world. So building wise, uh, nothing major, like everything would look uh, pretty promising. Um, but here is is uh, where it gets dicey. And this is why I really want, wanted to uh, discuss this one with you, even though it's not available at the very moment, because I just think this is a really good learning experience for you when you're you're going through these properties because location location man that's the most important thing the agent had stated this is the uh public remarks from the agent brick quad within a mile of university circle all units three bed one bath all updated in 2018 highlights include vinyl windows throughout glass block windows and basement porches on each unit newer furnaces and hot water tanks walkable to university circle some off street parking Available in drive, no through traffic on the block, close to public transportation and gas station, convenience store. All units were rented at 800 through CMHA, three bedroom rentals in the area, getting as much as 1200 a month. University Circle in the surrounding area is home to Case Western Reserve University, many of Cleveland's cultural institutions, University Hospital, brand new development, restaurants, upscale condos, Wade Oval Park, Little Italy, and Cleveland Clinic's main campus. So we're priced right. Apparently we could bring in a ton of money. It's a quad, best thing to finance. By University Circle, college rentals, everything sounds like it's freaking amazing, which is why I think you're so high on this investment. But that is why you hire me, because we need to dig deeper, deeper, okay? Now, what I've done for you is I've pulled up Google Earth, and yeah, we are right there, hop, skip, and a jump. We're just a very little bit northeast of University Circle in Little Italy, two great areas. I understand why you'd want to be near them. If you can get properties in there or rent to college students over here, that's freaking great. You're, you're barking up the right tree, but we got to dig deeper, brother. Now, there are certain uh, areas of the Cleveland market where you, you – and, and pretty much every – like Midwestern Rust Belt type city, you hear people say like, oh, you know, that particular neighborhood, it can change on a block by block basis. And, you know, this little area more so uh, than any. Now, East Cleveland itself, if you check out the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, I have given East Cleveland a grade of F. It is a crummy neighborhood. It is the hood. It is one of the worst neighborhoods in the Cleveland market, if not the United States of America. Poverty, drug addiction, violence, property theft, murders, worst of the worst, blight, right? You think about the ghetto, East Cleveland is the freaking ghetto, dude. There's like nothing good in East Cleveland, right? You're not going to find a lot of high quality tenants in East Cleveland. You only live in East Cleveland because you don't have an opportunity to live anywhere else. There's nothing good about East Cleveland. Now I've even done videos. I've done a video on this. I sold a quad in East Cleveland though. that had a lot of similarities uh, to this and I thought it was great for out of state investors. And, um, if you go to, uh, Mayfield road, okay. You just go a little bit east from little Italy university circle. We're just going to cruise east on Mayfield Road. Then you kind of go northeast, just north of Coventry Village. There's this nice little triangle of properties. We've got 
uh, just a nice little neighborhood in here. We've got a ton of natural borders. Right to the west, we got the big old cemetery, which is directly to the east of the quad you're looking at. Right to the north, we got Forest Hill Park Reserve, okay? So more like parking and, park and wildlife and whatnot. And then, of course, to the south, we got Coventry Village, which is nice and trendy. And I sold a nice little quad in there. And even though it's East Cleveland, I was, and I, you know, I explained it. And this, that property is on the investment properties for sale show as well. So what I'll do is I'll put the link to that in the show notes so you guys can check it out. Now, normally I think East Cleveland's crummy, but I was like, yo, dude, we are literally on the border of some nice stuff and we're getting a ton of college dudes coming in and renting this, you know, Case Western students, blah, 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 blah. So even though it's East Cleveland, I like it. You know, basically I was uh, giving a bunch of bullet point reasons uh, why I thought it made a lot of sense to buy that property, which is pretty much identical to the the reasons the particular listing agent has given us on this property, 1825 Lakeview. But here is the difference. Let's cruise back over, still on Google Earth here, let's just cruise over to 18325 Lakeview. Now, natural borders, when you're worry, uh, working with neighborhoods where it's like really hot and then it goes to really sketchy, there's typically like a big natural boundary where you can see the, the breaking point, the changing point, right? People use the term other side of the tracks, right? And, uh, you know, with that neighborhood I liked, okay, we had that. On the north, we had parks. On the on the west, we had a big, huge natural break. No, no people there, right? We got the, uh, was that a cemetery or was that a park? Uh, Lakeview Cemetery, yeah. So we got uh, the big old cemetery and then a park. West, north, and then right to the south, we got a good neighborhood. Well, over here, this is kind of working against us. The same thing that made the other neighborhood a pro is a con over here because we've got University Circle and Little Italy, okay? But then we go to that same cemetery. That is right there. So in between the good stuff, we got the big old natural break, the cemetery, okay? And then to the north, we got just more crummy ghetto. So if you actually go down to where the street is, if you look on Lakeview, right? There's our quad right to the west. That's an empty lot. That home was torn down right to the east. That was torn down. Then you got another house. And then it appears like the one right next to that was torn down. If you go to the street, which is directly north, right? That borders the backyard. If you look, it's called Woodlawn Avenue. The entire freaking street has been torn down, okay? What that means is all the homes in this whole street, like how many plots do we have in a row here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 plots in a row on Woodlawn. There were 16 homes there and they all were so run down and so dilapidated. They all had to be torn down. And then if you look across the street, you got three, then you got a house, then you got another two, then you got five houses, then you got another two. You go the other street north of that. Looks like we got a house on the corner there. This is Penrose now. You got a house, then you got a vacant lot, a house, a vacant lot, a house. Then you got one, two, three, four, five vacant lots, another three houses, a vacant lot, two houses, a vacant lot, four houses, a vacant lot, two houses, one, two, three, four, five more vacant lots. You go to the other side of the street. Corner of Penrose and Forest Hill Avenue, two vacant lots. Then we got, what is that, six houses, two more vacant lots, a house, vacant lot, house, vacant lot, four houses, vacant lot, house, vacant lot, three more vacant lots. Go, you know, continue go north, Brightwood Street, three vacant lots, a house, two vacant lots, a couple more houses with some vacant lots, a few more houses across the street, another deal. The whole goddamn street has been torn down. There is literally, uh, on the corner of Forest Hill all the way to Euclid Avenue, that whole street there, I only see three homes that are remaining standing. And then uh, if you see to the northeast, it just continues on and on. So this little pocket, yes, this little pocket is really close to nice stuff. Um, but that's not always the full story because the actual neighborhood itself is just God, God awful destroyed. And then something else that's kind of very telling going to uh, 
moving from like the aerial view on Google Earth here to the actual street view, you know, where you actually put that little yellow guy on the street. Uh, you see our big old quad right there. And of course, as just mentioned, right, we got two big old vacant lots right next to it. Turning this, right, turning it to the east, what do you see there? All I see is just a ton of crummy stuff, right? The street's destroyed. We got a few crummy houses minus all of our vacant lots. Everything is just total blight and peril. But what is smack dab in front of our face? Would you look at that? That looks to be a pretty expensive all black tinted windows Lincoln Navigator. You know, that's, uh, that's a fairly expensive uh, SUV, okay? So you got a, just on Google Earth, right? Google Earth, random picture here. This is a snapshot of the neighborhood. This is exactly um, a snapshot of what you'd be buying if you purchased this property. All blight. These houses are crummy. They're so bad they're getting torn down. And then, boom, we got this big old fancy black SUV. Uh, I'll give you one guess as to the the occupation of the gentleman who's driving <laughs> that Lincoln Navigator. And if you guess anything other than drug dealer, you're wrong. So that is a, a look into this property, Angus. And I felt that that was really important because you were very, very high on this property. And um, there's reasons for why you're so high based upon the marketing. But I wanted to really peel back peel back the layers of transparency and, and give you this look. Now, I'm not saying one should never buy super blighted properties. It works for some people. Some people it will work. Uh, for you and your plan, what you've identified and what me and you have been working on thus far, I don't, I don't see this being a match from a risk standpoint. In addition to that, though, I'm not just poo-pooing on people who want to buy high-risk stuff. If you want to buy high-risk stuff, that's cool. Which brings me to my next point, Angus. You're actually interested in a property that we've had on the investment properties for sale. So 616 East 117th, okay? That is a multifamily uh, property that I am selling. Now, here is the thing. Angus, you asked me if, you, if I think that would work for you. I don't really think that would work for you specifically, um, reason being, you know, it's just, it's, it's another F class property, another F class risk. And with what you're trying to do, you have a few million dollars, you're trying to passively invest and you need a property manager to handle that. You don't have a lot of contacts in Cleveland and Holton Wise, we're not going to take on properties that are that blighted for our uh, management and construction. It's just not worth the hassle for us. I think properties like that work for those folks who are local. Uh, those work great for contractors, guys that are literally doing it themselves to actually pay a company like ours, a third party company to handle all the BS involved, man, it can get pretty costly. And I just don't think it's a risk you want to take on. But that said, if you decided you really wanted to get into something that high risk, that's totally cool. Um, but here's the thing you got to understand. And this is why I dislike this Lakeview property so much for investors. Lakeview listed at 149900 Now the property that I have on Holton Wise TV the, the property is priced more appropriately taking all the risks involved, right? Very similar property, but I've got it for less than half of what this Lakeview is. So even if you're like, yeah, man, I'm down with all the risks. I'm ready to rock and roll. What they have priced Lakeview at, I, I don't think it makes any sense. If you are somebody out there who's interested in purchasing a high risk asset, and I don't like to use the MLS search and analysis show as a platform to market my listings and the properties that I'm selling on the investment properties for sale show. So this is not like I'm just trying to take this opportunity to pitch you guys on 616 East 117th. I'm really just trying to provide you with the most possible detailed explanation and education I can, Angus. I mean, that's what you're paying me for. So again, if you do want to go high risk, you can, if you're going to pick one and Lakeview became available, I would say you, sh you would definitely be better off paying less than half and getting 616 East 117th. But I'm not trying to sell you, Angus. I don't think you should necessarily buy 616 East 117th because I don't think it works for the plan that you've laid out for me and what you and I have been doing together. It's going completely into left field. It's not what you and I are trying to do. But for everyone else out there who might be watching this, and you are a local and you are a savage and you're used to uh, working with super for high risk stuff. Uh, if you're looking at one of the two, you're looking at the, the Lakeview property versus East 117th. I think East 117th, of course, gonna make a lot more sense because you don't have to pay as much money and that's priced appropriately. This one, in my opinion, is way overpriced and I think it's probably gonna fall out of contract and come back on the market. All right, Kevin. So as you can see, 
I thought that was a bad move for Angus, and I think it's going to be a bad move for you too, bro. Now, I know you're young cat, young blood. You got uh, – you know, you got the high risk tolerance because you're super young and you're ready to fucking rock and roll. And that's awesome, dude. And I'm pulling up another property for you that is, it's going to have some risk to it, okay? But it's not going to be as risky as that one. And I think this would be the better buy. I think this would be the better property for you and I to start with, dude. 3161 West 92nd Cleveland, 4 for 102. Just came on the market today. Zero days on the market. Literally just popped up. I saw this, uh, and I was like, dude, this will work good for this guy. $49,000 is what they got it listed at. Now, we don't have too, too much information on the property. Let's read what the listing agent said. Listing agent working out of uh, Keller Williams Brokerage. Um, Two-family duplex, wood floors throughout. Both units are two-bed, one-bath, fenced-in yard. Both units lease, positive cash flow. On the screen, you can see the rents right there. Each unit, two, one, four fifty in rent. Now, let's go to the photos. We don't have much, dude. It's just outside stuff, but that, that's pretty normal. Uh, there is a couple clues here, which, you know, based upon this neighborhood, I would have already, like, assumed or known this based on the neighborhood and the, and the price range. But don't expect this thing to be, like, this super fresh, like, beautiful property it's not going to cut out like that like you got some issue here right there you know the the stuff's all chipping and messed up these are just like when we don't have a lot of photos like it's nice to be able to just like take these little hints right like you see this this is peeling paint right you can see this peeling paint you could really like learn a lot just from these exterior photos because like if the exterior is already starting to look worn and stuff dude the interior is going to be the same like even down here too right like you can see like this this like uh gating grading whatever you call that stuff like that's all broken you know more just like peeling and stuff just like you see a lot of like wear which is it's fine for what we're doing you just you got to see this stuff like this is railing it's not even proper i mean look at all the hints i'm grabbing just from this picture i'm trying to get off this picture but i keep noticing these like those don't even look like four by fours to me first of all it's crooked as fuck but that just looks like somebody just some fucking handyman special from a motherfucker that's not that handy just throw up two by four two by four two by four right it's not like a real fucking railing or anything right so let me get off this picture uh i could probably go on for days um, with this picture, but let me get to the the next one. There's one I really wanted to show you. Like, boom, right here, right? Like, look at the back, right? This just shows you what you're dealing with, dude. Like, look, that's a boarded up window. How long has that window been boarded up, right? Now, I know I told you let's not buy the quad and let's do this one instead, and then I've just been talking shit about it. But that's okay, man. There's a, there's a rhyme and a reason to it, right? I just I want you to you know get the proper expectations with what you're trying to do, right? Um, like this is what you're buying, right? So it's it's rough, okay? It's rough. But as you know. I already said the rents four fifty four fifty. Those are low, okay. Those are low rents too. That's that's key, right? So right now it brings in nine hundred ten thousand eight hundred dollars a year. Now the price they have it listed at forty nine thousand. I don't think you have to pay forty nine thousand, even though it just hit the market. I think we can utilize some of the stuff that I just showed you, right? It's a it's an old beat up property. It's in a D class neighborhood. Um, I will, my team, we manage like hundreds of properties in this little area. You're kind of close to the Metro Health stuff. It's like, oh, you know, we're a little bit away. Like you're not in walking distance to Metro Health and all the good stuff that's happening over there. But like it's, it's more or less a similar neighborhood. If you're going to, if you're sick and you live here, you're going to go to a hospital. You're going to go to that hospital. So like there is promise in this neighborhood. So I, I feel very comfortable investing in this neighborhood. Uh, would not feel comfortable buying rentals in the Lakeview neighborhood, dude. I see nothing good happening over there right now. Maybe that changes, but, you know, in this particular neighborhood, it's rough, not as rough, and we have a very good reason to believe things are going to get better, so I'd like this. But you got to go Section 8. Neither of these two tenants are Section 8, and they're both paying under market rent. So the strategy for these two tenants, dude, leave them alone, right? Leave them alone. Don't fuck with them. Don't try to increase the rent. Don't do anything, dude, because it's still a positive cash flow property. And based upon what I'm looking at outside, 
when these tenants do move out, and they will, right? Natural turnover is going to occur. When they do move out, though, bro, anticipate like a $10,000 rehab in each of the units to get them Section 8 ready to bring in market rent, which over here right now, we're looking at anywhere between like six fifty dollars and 700 bucks a month, right? So we're going to be able to get the, the rent dramatically up, right? Like currently brings in nine. We could eventually bring in as much as 1400 a month. But with the fact that it's kind of, you know, it's rough, it's, you know, it's a dog, right? We're going to try to pick it up for 44K. If you, if you do that right now, pick it up for 44K, the 900 comes in, we're going to anticipate 635 on average coming out. It's going to leave us with 265 a month for our average NOI. Now, I cannot stress this enough, dude. That is an average NOI. It ain't going to look like that every month, right? Look at this chart. You're not going to get $45 bills every month from Holton Wise for repairs and maintenance, dude. Like right now, we're probably not going to do very many repairs, right? We got two paying tenants in there. They're obviously, you know, used to rough conditions. We're not going to mess with them. Of course, if they call in for repairs, we're going to fix those. There's like leaking, but, you know, the home inspection will determine that stuff but like other than that we're not going in and like flipping their unit renovating their unit giving them a new kitchen shit like that we're not doing that right so you're not going to see like a bunch of little stuff but when they do finally move out then you know that 45 you've been saving you've been saving boom you're going to get a big ass bill dude because to get this to section 8 ready bro it's probably gonna be like 10k 5 to 10k depending on the fixtures you get right <laughs> So keep that in mind. And like your capital expenditures, right? Your roof, a roof on a property like this, dude, it's not a very big duplex. It's fairly small. Um, I don't know. I've seen like really, really big duplexes in the Cleveland market with like the uh, just like massive properties. They could be as high as like eight. This one's a little smaller, dude. So I think we'll be in like the six to $7,000 range. Roofs last 30 years. Don't think that you're getting a new roof, right? Your inspector's probably going to, you know, give you a 90-page inspection report with a million violations on them. Don't think I'm not anticipating that. Don't think that I haven't baked that into the cake of why I think we could pick it up for 44 k Don't think the listing agent from Keller Williams didn't bake that into the cake. That's why she listed it at 49 right? We know that nothing it's brand new so don't be like oh sweet we're gonna get it at 44k and then the inspection comes back you're like james the roof sold the furnaces are old we gotta drop the price 20k no man i i know i know that it's old that's why we're talking about the numbers we're talking about right so 30 years is how long these things last it's probably six or seven thousand dollar roof because it's not like the biggest duplex i've ever seen so that's what you're going to factor in. Hot water tanks, you got to replace those every 15 years about. Those are about a G. Furnaces, you replace those every 30 years. Those are about three Gs, right? So you're going to account for that stuff, right? Then you got all the other stuff, taxes, insurance, blah, blah, blah. So accounting for all that, 265 on average. If you pick it up at 44000 bro, it's a 7.2 cap, and it still looks to be, even though it's rough, it's cosmetically ugly, it's beat, we could probably still get it picked up with a loan. No reason for you to pay cash, dude. So you're only gonna need to put down eleven thousand. You got sixty grand right now. You're only gonna have eleven k into this particular deal. What does that leave you with? That leaves you with forty nine thousand uh, dollars to continue on to build up a bigger portfolio right and the mortgage it's cheap the whole thing right now 13.75 percent cash on cash return so just take that money run ride these tenants out as long as humanly possible they both been there for a little while they're both paying super small rents dude maybe we'll slowly increase them in like a year get those rents a little higher but other than that dude we don't want these people moving out right because as soon as they move out you got to fork over maybe ten thousand maybe twenty thousand dollars to get us new tenants but the good news is when you do that then we're going to get them section 8 tenants in there and then it's going to be smooth sailing and again we could rent it for almost or almost as much as 1400 a month i'm putting a market value on each of these units depending on the fixtures uh in time of the year things of that nature at 650 to 700 per unit per month right so for all those reasons i think this would be a much better buy. And I like the fact that you're a super young guy with this high risk tolerance, right? Because, like, if you were, like, 65 and you wanted to get into high risk real estate, I'd be like, bro, I don't know, dude. You're, like, at retirement age. Why don't we get some low risk stuff, right? The older you get, the lower your risk tolerance should go, right? You don't want to just continually get high risk stuff as you get older into age, right? You need to start living off that retirement money. But you're a young guy, man. Like, dude, 
you probably don't need this money uh, till retirement, right? So you could really build up a big business, scale it out. Because, dude, whenever you get these low-income rentals, even though we're going to go Section 8 to alleviate a lot of those risks, dude, at no point, like if you have 100, <laughs> if you get 100 D-class rentals, bro, at no point is there any, like, scenario where all your units are, like, good, everything's perfect, everything's low-key. Like, there will be problems every single month. I don't know if you've already seen it, but if you haven't, I want I want you and everybody else who's watching right now to go look at some of the episodes of the Tenants from Hell show, okay? Some of those uh, episodes, man, they're fucking rough, and where do you think I get all that content from, guys? I get them from the C neighborhoods. I get them from the D neighborhoods, so, you know, that's... It's all baked into the cake, though, right? A lot of money can be made. We could do it. But I like that you're young and you could, like, really ride a lot of these peaks and valleys, bro, because that's what the performance is going to be like. You know, we're Holton Wise. We're the biggest name in the game. Nobody has a portfolio like ours in the Cleveland market. Like, you know, there is no, like, legitimate competition that we have for what we do. And, uh, you know, we're good. We know what we're doing. But that doesn't mean I can, like, make – these neighborhoods perform perfectly for you, right? It doesn't matter. I'm not magic. It is what it is. We are the best at reacting to it and mitigating risks to try to prevent it in the future. But, dude, it is, it is what it is. So there's, there's going to be some rough stuff. So the fact that you're young, you could ride that out. I really like that. I like this property for you. Definitely not feeling Lakeview, not worth it, uh, overpriced, and just even more risky than it needs to be. I don't see anything good happening in that neighborhood either. So I say we skip that one. Um, that's, that's it, man. That's what I got. This is your first video. You signed up for the eight or the 10 property package. So I got another eight for you. So folks, <clears throat> if you're like Kevin, you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one, you just go to holtonwise.com and you can go ahead and click here. We got the investment properties for sale show and the MLS search analysis show. You click on the MLS search analysis show. It takes you to all the packages. This is the one my man, Kevin got. This is the best one, in my opinion. A, I discounted it, right? Because I'm sweet, nice guy. Uh, no, not really. I just, uh, I think it's the most important thing, right? I didn't do it out of the necessarily the kindness of my heart. I just, I really want to, you know, incentivize you guys to get this 10 property package because I get a lot of new investors who watch the show and they're like, yeah, man, I want to invest in real estate. And like, they think that because they come to Cleveland from California or another high, high expense state that like, Dude, there's just like this, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of perfect deals just like fucking laid out for us. That's not how it works, man. We're going to have to put in some work. Like this property, Kevin, this is probably going to work out good. But dude, this is on the open market. There's like thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who got the same idea you, bro. They want to make money, right? So maybe the sellers, they don't accept our price. Uh, maybe the sellers and their agents start fighting each other and the deal goes off the market. Maybe other people outbid us, right? There's all kinds of things that can happen. Maybe you go in, you put it under contract, you get the inspection, and it turns out we got a huge structural issue and the deal doesn't make sense anymore, right? There's a million factors at play with these open market deals, which could mean the deal doesn't go through. You don't get the deal. So that's why I've lowered the price, and that's why I pitched this 10 property package, because to actually solidify it and get a deal going, you know, we need to go back and forth many times. It could take us several properties before we actually put a deal together to get you to the closing table, right? So I get a lot of these folks out there. They want to just do one property, and uh, they pay their money. They pay their several hundred dollars to me, and I give them the video, and they're all gung-ho. They're like, hell yeah, this is going to be great. And then, boom, I got to tell them the seller said, fuck off. They don't like our offer. You don't got a deal. And then they're all sad. They're disenfranchised, and they kind of want to give up, right? So that's why I push this one, dude. Because, like, you know, I, I'm trying to build my business, trying to build my portfolio. I need you guys to get to the closing table. I know how this is going to shake out. So I really like to set the proper expectations. I think I do a very good job of shooting you guys straight, man, giving you the good, the bad, the ugly. I think a lot of people out there, they just tell you about the good stuff with real estate. I, I, I challenge anyone out there to find anybody in the world selling you know real estate doing turnkey real estate i challenge you guys to find somebody who's more honest and open and crass and just blunt about the industry than i am dude right i don't think there is uh so that's why i pitched this one because it, it it just makes sense right because 
dude, this ain't going to be super smooth. We're going to run into problems. So we really need to do 10 together to, to make this work, to, to start building up that portfolio, bro. So I'm glad you already get that. I'm glad you bought that. Everyone else who's watching this show, that's why I pitch it. So if you want to work with me, that's the package I think you should pick. But, of course, there are other packages under there, which, uh, you know, varying in size and price. So pick the one that makes the most sense for you. That's all I got for today's show. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Based in Indianapolis, Indiana, FS Houses is the premier investment property brokerage with an in-house property management department that can take care of all those unwanted landlord headaches. FS Houses can offer you the complete turnkey solution as well as wholesale properties offered to you at a discounted rate. With a network of thousands of active investors, wholesalers, and brokers, FS Houses can help you sell your property for top dollar on the open market or in a hurry to motivated investors seeking distressed real estate. Visit FSHouses.com or call 317-492-9025 for more information on the Indianapolis, Indiana real estate. G'day everyone, it's Angela Ramora here, your favorite Australian and the founder and owner of Ohio Cashflow. Over the last five years, Ohio Cashflow has established itself as the most reputable turnkey real estate investment company in the country. We offer solid B-class properties in Toledo, Ohio. We work and live in the same areas that we sell in. So when we sell your property, your tenants become our neighbors. We only take on a handful of investors every month. So for your chance to work with one of the best in the business, please fill out our investor application form, which you can find in the video notes below. Thanks for listening. And as we say down under, I'll catch you later, mate. Is that it? Yeah, we're done. All right, cool. Rent Tech Direct provides you with an easy to use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With Rent Tech Direct, you'll also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built-in marketing tools. Just enter the details of your property and Rent Tech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia, and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.